Welcome everyone, I'm at Kennedy Space Center with the Tim Tracker and the Gen Tracker and we are here with the NASA logo behind us and look at that rocket slash space shuttle up there. We are about to get a VIP tour on the property which I am really super excited about. You guys ready? Oh yeah. Ready. All right, join us. Shall you? actually pretty chilly and pretty windy today which is kind of uncommon for Florida but to take my mind off the chilliness take a look at these so chilly we have our chocolate what did you call it space chocolate, space space chocolate. chocolate. it seems legit yeah I'm, I'm excited for it's it. a galactic cocoa <laughs> You can actually go up inside the Gemini spacecraft. Look at this. This is pretty cool. You can actually sit inside of here. Pretty neat. crazy to think that this rocket that I stand in front of was actually blasted into the air. You can see the markings are still the same. And there's the rocket. And there's the markings. Of course it's been repainted. It looks, looks a little old and antique in that one. So it's been repainted a little bit. But pretty cool. On July 16th, 1969, Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin walked across this very service arm. the Orion multi-purpose crew vehicle. I just said that. You're repeating me. Sorry. <laughs> what you're looking at is actually Legos. But this is not your typical Lego construction. This is actually a space vehicle. Look at this. The Mars Exploration Rover. That pretty much beats any Lego set I ever owned. How much do you think that would cost if you were to buy that in the Lego store? Hundred bucks? Uh, no, way more. <laughs> kind of thinking maybe I need to purchase this. This would look pretty sweet on me. Yeah, yeah. Look at that jacket. It's pretty styling. I'm pretty much been to the moon at this point. Are you gonna buy that? I think I might. It's pretty great. Should I get this or that? I was kind of eyeballing that one. I at least want to try it on. I'm all ready for space. I'm ready to blast off. This is how you wear this, right? Yeah, perfect. I love it. We all found our appropriate coffee mugs. Look at this. Now we just have to find some coffee. Yeah. Or some more coffee. Some more uh, space coffee. took my photo. Look at that. <laughs> That's me on, on the moon. It's just about lunchtime and we're going to take full advantage of our VIP lunch with an astronaut. Well, this is pretty legit in here. Yeah. We're the first ones through the door. All right, got the plates. This is where, where they trick you and put you in the salad first. Go right for part of palm salad or pigeon peas and yellow rice. My meal is consisting of a piece of bread. This is mojo chicken. This is red snapper. Red snapper. And some rice and this really cool looking salad that has, there's like feta cheese or something here and tomatoes and 
cucumbers. I think so. And Tim went the extra mile and actually just got a slice of pizza. I got a garnish of pizza on yep. top. You got all the fancy food and of course just a regular old piece of pizza <laughs> on top. On top. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to introduce to you today astronaut Wendy Lawrence. There's a hidden Mickey in my meal. There's a hidden Mickey in my meal. The shuttle produced 6.5 million pounds of thrust. And even though I spent at that point in time probably hundreds of hours in the simulator, it is not like the real rocket. So you talked about the feeling of taking off into space or into lower Earth orbit. Can you talk a little bit about re-entry and re-acclimating to gravity? It's not fun. <laughs> I don't like it, honestly. Um, again, the human body is just an amazing thing. It get, pretty quickly gets used to being weightless, and then sadly, um, you got to come back to gravity. And you th would think, since you've spent virtually your entire life in this environment, working against gravity, that that would be the easier transition. It's not. Like a replica of the footprint on the moon which is still there because there's no atmosphere or wind on the moon. All right, the journey to the behind the scenes stuff starts here, right here. So that's where we're going, right? I hope so. We're going into there, which is part of the behind the scenes VIP tour we're on right now. Yeah, this is a Saturn V. Look at how much larger it was compared to our space shuttle. Yeah, that's, that's twice the size. Doors. Oh, much more it's than It's like twice. the difference between the Disneyland Castle and Walt Disney World Castle. Yeah. That's, that's a good comparison to that. This is Disneyland or Disney World. And this would be Shanghai. Shanghai, right. <laughs> This is the best seat in the house. Right down the middle. This is the best view of behind the scenes I've ever of ever all time. Getting behind the scenes of a bus. Facilities such as the vehicle assembly building you see, five miles, eight kilometers up the road. Just to the left of it were white tipped towers. Those are lightning towers at the corners of Launch Pad 41 where Atlas V launches occur. First stop is right here. This is the closest spot that you can actually get to watch the launches. And a few lucky people are able to sit on these bleachers and watch the launch just a short little ways across that water. So this is pretty cool to get this close. This You normally cannot get this close to the launch pads. Awesome. In the future, we're going to be using just about the entire altitude of the building once again for the new program. It's a humongous crawler. Look at that. It has tank-like wheels. Our foot. And that thing is six million pounds. Second driver's control box on the opposite corner. We did not do U-turns. SpaceX, they have uh, use of this pad for the next 20 years, down to about 18 years at this point. But uh, they have been modifying things to fit the needs of their Falcon 9 Heavy and Falcon 9 Human versions. Look at the secure fence they have all around the launch pad area. It's pretty difficult to climb over that because of the arching. Make it very difficult to actually scour over the top of that fence. Off in the distance you can actually see the ocean and in the forefront of the shot is actually a camera used to record the launches, a very enhanced camera to record everything that happens out here. But look at this relic of the past directly in front of us. This. Some old sandbags over an old pipe. No telling how many years that has been there. And there's also no telling how many years that porta potty has been standing strong. NASA. Check out that launch pad right there. It's amazing how much history has been launched off of that concrete slab directly over to the right of the sign. 
an alligator well, down there in that five, ditch. Five or six thousand alligators on our property here at Kennedy Space Center. Yeah. Which is a nice addition to our security system. Location where we had the old compound plot. Uh, a little over a year ago, we replaced it with an up-to-date multimedia screen that can do countdown, but it can do a lot more. The size of that American flag is almost as big as a football field. That pretty much gives the dimensions of the size of this building. Massive. They've actually painted part of the American flag here on the ground to symbolize the exact size of what it looks like from here to up there. Crazy because from here it doesn't really look like it is that tall, but when you look at the perspective of the stripes and the size of the stars, these people are laying down. And this person is probably five, five and a half, maybe close to six feet tall. It doesn't even cover across from one of the stripes, which would be up there. Wow. That's a big building. I was just reading this and my mind was kind of blown. The launch abort system travels from zero to 500 miles per hour in three seconds. That is insane. You gotta get up, the bus is leaving. I know. <laughs> Come on, there's no time to lay around. I was taking a nap. This is a pretty crazy room. We're like in a waiting area, waiting to go through into something. This is the actual launch control from the Apollo 8 space shuttle. Right here. These are the actual controls. This is actually the astronaut van that actually took the astronauts on the Apollo missions right inside of here. And if that's not impressive enough, take a look at this. Even more impressive is this incredibly heavy rocket is actually off of the ground and you can walk completely underneath the structure of it. You can actually touch, you can actually touch the moon. So Jen is actually touching the moon. What's it feel like? It feels like a really smooth rock. Very smooth. I should touch the moon. You should touch it. You should touch the moon. Oh, I can't get in this way. Oh, you gotta go under. You gotta oh, you gotta go, go under. under. You gotta go under here. Here we go. Ready? You dare me? Double you dog. Double dog dare me? Triple dog dare you? You dare me? I'm touching the moon right now. <laughs> the moon has been touched. That's pretty cool. That's pretty neat though. There's a piece of the actual moon. Your smartphone has more computing power than any of the computers they use in the Apollo missions. Any of them. They were the size of refrigerators. And you guys, it's amazing, uh, but again, we have the compendium of human knowledge really in the palm of our hand when we use our smartphones. What do we do with them? Watch cat videos mostly. Going inside a humongous vault. What could be inside here? This has been inspected. And returned. Oh, look at all like, the damage and stuff on the bottom. That's Okay, it's time for the grand finale. Going into this building underneath these rockets. I seem to be the only person standing. Everyone else has seats. And I'm staring at the black and white screen with a naked man throwing a stick. It's like we have entered into the swamps of Florida. It's 
pretty incredible to think that there is an actual space shuttle that went into space, the Atlantis, directly in front of me. Look at this. Incredible. Of course, the rocket boosters at the bottom, the payload in the middle, and the astronauts up front. Look at this terrifying kids park. Look at that tunnel. It's dangling up in the air. There's nothing underneath it to hold you up. Those kids have more guts than I will ever have. I would be screaming. This is actually a space shuttle sippy mug. I would totally buy that. That's right, astronaut. Save the planet. Save the planet. All right, so that about wraps it up from Kennedy Space Center. We have stayed here so long that night has fallen, and it's very chilly, so it's a good thing that you bought that jacket. Yeah. Make sure you check out, check out the Tim Trackers channel. They are going to have a video. I'll put the link down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. You're recording this?